Hello there. The Prime Minister has been sent a Freedom of Information request to reveal legal advice some believe she has been given that says Brexit can be reversed at any time. The Guardian reports that the Prime Minister, Theresa May, is under pressure to reveal the contents of secret legal advice she has regarding the triggering of Article 50 and if the leaving process can be stopped. The government has always said that Brexit is unstoppable and that any choice now comes down to whatever deal the EU offers us or no deal at all. But some people believe that the legal advice given to the PM would allow the country the option of staying in the EU should our own MPs decide to do so in the national interest. A prominent lawyer from the Matrix Chambers, Jessica Seymour QC, is quoted in The Guardian as having been told by two good sources that Article 50 notification can be withdrawn by the UK at any time before the 29th of March 2019, resulting in the UK remaining in the EU on its current favourable terms. And the former Lib Dem leader, Nick Clegg, has chimed in saying, Article 50 was never the one-way conveyor belt to Brexit as claimed by the government. It can be stopped at any point. Well, I took a look at Article 50 again today, and although I'm not a qualified lawyer, I read it in plain English, and I've put a link to it in the description box below. Here are the relevant parts as far as I'm concerned. Under paragraph 2 of the article, A member state which decides to withdraw shall notify the European Council of its intention. Now that has been done. And under paragraph 3 of the article, the treaties shall cease to apply to the state in question from the date of entry into force of the withdrawal agreement or, failing that, two years after the notification referred to in paragraph 2. The wording is quite clear and explicit. Once a notification has been made under Article 50, the EU and member state concerned have up to two years to come to a deal. And if no deal is reached, they go their separate ways anyway. The only addition to that is that we leave after two years unless the European Council, in agreement with the member state concerned, unanimously decides to extend this period. Now, just to clarify, it is not the EU or the Commission or the EU Parliament that is referred to here. It is the Council of Ministers only. That means that for the two-year period to be extended, would require the agreement of all 28 current member state heads of government, that is, all prime ministers, and only them, to unanimously agree. But this would probably need their, the agreement of their own parliaments with all the associated voting and meeting and debating. How long would that take to achieve? One day past the two years and it's too late. Now, if you follow the link provided, you will see that there is no mention in Article 50 of changing minds or withdrawing the withdrawal paperwork. You could argue that we just negotiate the status quo, including keeping our MEPs in place. But even here, Article 50 is quite explicit. The union shall negotiate and conclude an agreement with that state, setting out the arrangements for its withdrawal. Note the use of the word withdrawal. So any agreement reached must be a withdrawal agreement, not a status quo stitch-up. Some may suggest that we just use the extension mechanism to go permanently beyond the two-year deadline. But that has to be agreed unanimously. So what do you think the political and economic costs could be to the UK as each country contacted our PM separately and said, we'll vote to let you stay, but it will cost you X, Y and Z. Our coastline would end up three miles inland and Gibraltar would be flying the Spanish flag. But, would say a Remainer, if the EU and UK politicians agree, then that'll be OK. We can just forget the legal niceties. My answer to that would be, don't forget the UK legal system. All that it would take would be a leave-minded equivalent of Gina Miller to challenge such a decision through the courts and we'd have an almighty constitutional bust-up.
Nick Clegg also claims that the UK could just stay in a reformed EU. As countless EU leaders have said in private and in public, he said, most recently President Macron, there remains a route back for the UK into a reformed EU. This does not mean simply turning the clock back to the day before the referendum, but forging a new status for the UK in an outer circle of EU membership as the core countries proceed with deeper integration. And Labour MP Chuka Umuna also said that Legally, there is nothing inevitable about this process, and the UK retains the right to change its mind. Politically, many EU partners have indicated they have no objections to this. Now, a reformed EU would take treaty changes, so would never happen this side of eternity, let alone 2019. And once again, ignoring the legal issues involved would result in challenges through the courts by leavers. The Leave side needs to quickly start buying in its own legal advice and building a war chest for court action commencing now. We can't rely on this wobbly government, as the Remain politicians in it will be happy with any expedient fudge they can get away with. The truth is, the threat of a concerted legal attack on any attempt to fudge Brexit would do wonders in keeping our politicians on the Brexit straight and narrow. What do you think? Would you donate to a cross-party Brexit legal fighting fund? Please leave a comment below. Thank you. Please do like and share this video. And also subscribe to my channel. And when subscribing, please do remember to press on the little bell next to the subscribe button. That way you'll get an alert every single time I put up a new video. Thank you very much for watching.